And today we're joined by Lenny Wilkins, head coach of the Raptors, a man who's been in basketball for over four decades. Coach, did you ever imagine as a kid in New York that you'd have a run like this in pro basketball? Never, never. Um, I really wasn't interested in basketball. Uh, I grew up in Brooklyn where baseball was supreme. And growing up, we played a lot of baseball, stickball, handball, boxball, stuff like that. And I got into basketball late. So I, I never dreamed that. Uh, that I would ever even play pro ball, let alone be here as a coach. Well, now, when you leave Providence, you, you, you're drafted in the first round, and, and you know this is where we look at this, the four decades in 1960, and, and you go to play in St. Louis, and <laughs> you play with some great players. Yeah. yeah. Well, the draft back then wasn't like it is today. Today it's like you hit the lottery. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I was drafted number one. I was told about it. I was in class at the time. In and class? Yes. You didn't have a big party sitting around? No, no, <laughs> didn't have a big party today. And, uh, and I didn't go out to visit the Hawks. Uh, I had a friend who was getting married during spring break, and uh, I thought that was more important. And I really wasn't sure about professional basketball. I had never seen a live game. So he set it up. We went to see the Celtics play. That was the first time I saw a pro game. They were playing the Hawks, who had drafted me, who I'd never contacted. And uh, when I saw the game, I thought it was exciting. I thought, yeah, I, I thought I was as good as some of those guards. And, you know, and uh, so I decided at that moment I would try. Uh, you, you go to St. Louis and uh, play with some really great players, uh, Bob Pettit, uh, Cliff Hagan, and you're a guard and you're playing with some of these guys and you're in charge of organizing all this. How difficult was that? Well, it was very difficult in the beginning because a lot of it was trial by error. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you had to uh, learn what you were supposed to do. The teaching wasn't as good as it is today. But one of the things that I picked up on right away was that I knew Bob Pettit was the key guy. <laughs> so I was going <laughs> to keep Famer, him. Right? That's yeah. right. I was going to keep him happy. And, but I knew what he liked to do, where he liked to get the ball. And, and I thought it was easy for me to get to those areas. How difficult was the whole league back then? When, I mean, we're in an age now of charter travel and, <laughs> and you know, you can be across the country in three hours. What was it like back then playing in the league? It, wasn't, it certainly wasn't the glamour that it is now. Well, it really wasn't. Uh, in fact, my first year in the NBA, there were eight teams. The very next year, we had nine teams. Uh, the year, two years later, we had 12 teams. But you knew everybody. And so it made for some very difficult games because we were playing each other five, six, seven times and tempers would flare and mm -hmm. so forth. Also, when you first came in as a rookie, at least uh, they didn't welcome me with open arms because <laughs> you were taking somebody's job, a right. friend's job. Where today, you want to help that player make his transition as quickly as possible because you know that that player can help you. Uh, at that time, the, the league was a little bit different too. Uh, mm -hmm. There were. Uh, probably on most teams, uh, two Afro-Americans and no more. Uh, the, the Celtics were unusual because they had like three mm -hmm. or, or four. But uh, in the cities we played, uh, the, it was difficult too because you couldn't eat in some of the restaurants. You know, uh, they uh, weren't uh, very tolerant of uh, minorities, mm -hmm. and, and so you felt that all the time. And uh, but. Uh, we continue to play, we continue to work hard to improve things, and uh, the league got better, bigger. Uh, we got better coaching as time went on, uh, you know, but I had an opportunity to play against some great players, like we talked about Bob Cousy. Right. Uh, you know, I, I can remember as a rookie stealing the ball from him, <laughs> <laughs> and referee blew the whistle, you know, and I You're not supposed to do that. Yeah, I said, I said to him, I said, you know, that was a clean steal, and he looked at me and, and all earnest and said that, uh, Oh, you can't take the ball off of Bob Cousy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Michael Jordan before his time. Uh, Coach, you, you talk about uh, the difficulty um, uh, back then, and tell me about some of the changes you've seen and how they've evolved. Well, there are a lot of changes today uh, in, in that uh, uh, we have uh, many more players today who have tremendous athleticism. Uh, back then, you, you'd have three maybe on a team. Has that been the biggest change, the athleticism? The, the athleticism has one of the big changes, okay? Yeah. Playing facilities are incredible today. Mode of travel, mm -hmm. all right? I mean, we'd have to get up and catch the first plane out. I mean, you had to make reservations and everything. 
and you had to stand in line to get your tickets, you had to get wow. your bags checked, wow. all that kind of stuff. You, and you ever talk to your guys about that? Yeah, they, they wouldn't have a clue. <laughs> they, they wouldn't even understand it. You know? And we, were, we didn't have first class seats. Right. We eventually got to that. But uh, so you see these big guys crunched up in these little seats. Uh, it was, so everything has changed for the better. The playing conditions, travel, uh, you know, uh, their coaching, um, facilities, mm -hmm. everything. You, you go from St. Louis to Seattle, and you're actually a player coach in Seattle. How did that come about, becoming a, a player coach? Well, you, you know, um, in St. Louis, what happened was the, I was with the Hawks for eight years, and the franchise was sold to Atlanta. Right. And we had a contract problem, and I wouldn't sign the contract they offered me. And back then, you, there wasn't anything as free agency. They still had an option on your playing rights. So I was traded to Seattle because uh, I wouldn't sign the contract with the Hawks. And after being with Seattle for one year, they fired the coach. And the general manager wanted me to be a player coach, uh, you know. And I told him, I said, you got to be crazy. <laughs> you know? And he said, well, you're like a coach anyway on the floor. You run the show. You know who should have the ball. You know, you do all these things naturally. Uh, we think it would be a good idea. And he was pretty persistent about it. So eventually I relented and figured I had nothing to lose. I might as well try it and see. Uh, you know, a Hall of Famer as a player. MVP in the All-Star Game, you, you really improved your level of play as a player, and now you go into coaching to try to transfer some of that, and people don't know that you took over a team in Seattle that was kind of falling apart and did some pretty good things with them. Yeah, we were, I, I feel that I was very fortunate. Um, that team was 5-17 and 17 at the beginning of that year, and everyone was saying they were the worst team in basketball and so forth. And I had come there uh, that fall as a general manager and help engineer some of the trades and acquisition of these players. So you, so you felt somewhat responsible? Well, I, 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 <laughs> I, no, I didn't feel responsible, but I felt they were better than what they were showing right. and that they needed time and patience. We needed to make, simplify some things. And, and uh, I was very fortunate I was able to do that. And we turned it around, and uh, that year, going from what people said were the worst team in the NBA, we went to the finals. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and, and lost narrowly, and then people may not know, but what happens the next year? The next year we came back. Uh, we were very excited about our team. No one thought we would get back to the championship round again, and we did. We got, to the, you know, we got back to the playoffs. We played terrific basketball all throughout the playoffs. And we won the championship in 1979. Now, you, the same way that you had uh, learned, you passed your knowledge on. I remember watching that championship series, both of them actually, in this kind of young, red-headed black man <laughs> playing very well for you, who turned out to be Dennis Johnson. And, and can you tell us about some of the things and how you worked with Dennis? Because he became a great player. Yes, he did. Uh, you know, when I took over uh, the team, Dennis was coming off the bench and so was uh, Gus Williams coming right. off the bench and, and a few guys, you yeah. know, John Johnson, who I had brought there. And, and I just felt that these players should be starting. Uh, I thought we could have a better rotation if they were starting. So I, when I took over, I talked to the team about this, and I wanted to start Gus and Dennis and, and J.J. and bring Fred Brown off the bench and Slick Watts. Mm -hmm. And Fred was very receptive to it, and uh, we started to have some real success. I talked to Dennis about his free throw shooting, I spent time with him, and we got him up to where he was an 80% free throw shooter. He was a fierce competitor, mm -hmm. and so I wanted to channel that. And Gus was a guy who loved to play and, and could run all day, and uh, so we utilized his speed and quickness and getting out on fast breaks and things like that. Yeah, you had some, some really exciting teams, and, and your coaching career continues, and you, you move now to Cleveland and Atlanta, but when you came to Toronto, it's the first franchise that you never had a connection with as a player. Were you excited about the prospect of coaching a Vince Carter? Yeah, it really was, yeah, because uh, I had gotten a glimpse of him the year before and uh, I thought here's a young player that is, um, you know, he's just uh, touching the surface of what he can be. And that uh, with some patience, with some guidance, with some prompting, uh, that he could be one of the most incredible players in this game. Uh, right now I still enjoy it. I enjoy working with the young players we have. I've seen the progress in a Mo Pete. I've seen the progress in Alvin Williams. You know, I've seen the progress uh, 
the Keon Clark and uh, even Jerome Williams and Antonio. Uh, mm -hmm. So I've seen that. And that makes you feel pretty good because you're helping them to achieve their goal as well as your goal. You know? So as long as that happens, uh, I'm going to enjoy doing it. When it changes, then I'm going to look for something else. And whether it's in uh, being a consultant, uh, TV, business, you know, because I have some business opportunity as well, mm -hmm. we'll look at that. All right, Coach. Well, you know what? It's been great spending time with you and learning all about you, your past, and this game. And uh, we thank you for joining us. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm Paul Jones, and we'll see you next week off the hardwoods. Hey, now remember, George can shoot the ball, right? So if he has it, you got to be up on him, okay? Make him a dribbler. We don't, we want to rotate. If we double, we have to be in a full rotation, okay? Pick out spots now.